Bishop, but I was just wondering if in your time in D.C. you're planning on lobbying specific Congress people with specific requests, and also just you've thrown out a lot of different policy ideas. Um, if you've got an intended timeline that you can kind of attach to some of those. Well, um, yes, we, uh, you know, actually, uh, the originally, you know, this idea of a caravan was was uh, started in Detroit by some dealerships, and then they canceled because they said uh, too many, too much interest in it was a logistical problem. So we were like, we want to come. We made the decision a week ago to come. We co uh, we contacted each of us, our senators, our uh, representatives, and said we want to meet with them this afternoon on the very ideas we have presented to you today. And. Uh, we would like to see single-payer health care passed by the new Congress. We would like to see free, uh, I mean, the Employees Free Choice Act passed quickly mm -hmm. by the new Congress. The quicker the better are those two bills. The other ideas, it's a question of uh, uh, we're putting them forward in terms of getting the industry out of the problems it's, it's in. And uh, so oversight. We want that. Yeah, just wanted to add, we are we are scheduled, for example, to meet with uh, uh, my representative, our representative, John Conyers, in regards to the HR 676 and also to the green conversion, and we'll be meeting with them this afternoon. And you mentioned that other Michigan senators and reps tweeted about the Michigan Health Care Act and just... We, we are trying to schedule uh, meetings with uh, staff of uh, Stan, uh, Carl Levin and... Uh, Debbie Stabenow, uh, as you heard uh, Debbie say, I mean, uh, Wendy say, excuse me, um, we, we just did this uh, within the last week, and uh, we puzzled this together, and uh, we hope to be able to meet with uh, the staffs of uh, Carl Levin and uh, Debbie Stabenow this afternoon. Uh, yeah, two questions. One is um, how do you feel about Congress uh, uh, energy efficiency and fuel efficiency being part of um, the, the conditions for the money? Um, and also, you think of um, Chris Dodd saying that uh, the chairman of uh, or the CEO of GM should step down, and also as a commission for money. Um. I'd like to address it. Uh, I, I want to emphasize that um, we think that uh, the question of global warming is not an issue that we can put off for another day. Uh, if you look at uh, what the chief scientist for NASA has had to say about the subject, he's talking about uh, that global warming has gone through a couple of tipping points already, and that we're going to a, a further tipping point soon that's irreversible. And I don't think that we have the luxury to debate the question of whether we need to go into a more fuel efficient and better means of transportation for the 21st century, and that's why when they emphasize that even with the even with the uh, bridge loan, with the falling out of the auto market as it's happened, we are going to have massive layoffs, and we're going to have shuttered plants. And we think it's time in this midst of this crisis to convert and to look at national transportation policy so that these factories can be operated to to build the transportation of the future and to perhaps avoid the next tipping point. In global warming. On the question of Wagner, uh, anyone of you want to take I just want to talk about fuel efficient vehicles. Fuel efficient vehicles, uh, a lot of the big three have already come out with different lines and the flex fuels, and you know, Chevy is getting ready to release the Bolt, which is produced in Hamtramck next to my plant, uh, Local 22. And I, I, you know, I'm optimistic about this. I mean, you're, you've got a company that's proven that they have the electric vehicle technology and can, and can produce a decent working vehicle as they did with the EV1 in California. And now they, they're going to produce the next generation of that car. So they're already a generation ahead of their competitors who haven't produced any of these vehicles yet that I'm aware of. So I think General Motors is definitely heading in the right direction. All they need to do is weather the storm. And that would be making it through this economic crisis going on with the uh, marketing industry, or with the home, home loan industry, and all the loan, getting a loan for vehicles, and you know different types of um, the banking industry. So if, if we can get through the banking industry's crisis right now it's where people can afford to buy these cars, I mean, you're gonna, you got this wonderful vehicle, the Chevy Volt, that's going to come out. All we
all we've got to do is make it to that point. And then, you know, we've got all these different small vehicles, the Ford Focus, all the different lower, 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 uh, the smaller fuel economy vehicles that are, that are that are producing. Wagner even spoke about the four-cylinder engines that they're getting ready to uh, start producing in most of their vehicles. They're going to start offering that to a lot of smaller vehicles with more power and uh, and higher fuel efficiency to, to meet the CAFE standards. I, I think uh, General Motors is definitely moving in the right direction. They just have to make it through this jump. You know, I, I'd like to say on this too that I mean. This idea of getting rid of uh, Wagner, uh, not if it means that the government is going to take on responsibility for this industry. They can't just say, well, you, you handle it, throw that guy out, put another guy in, but you handle it. They have to play a stronger role in guiding this for the future. Okay. Uh, up here. Uh, Ron Gallopinger said that the union has to make changes to its 2000 contract and additional concessions to get uh, aid. Do you guys support taking some additional concessions? I believe that it's a politically expedient position because it makes it sound so fair that everybody should come to the table and make sacrifices. What's not being recognized is that auto workers made incredible sacrifices just a year, ago, a year ago, and that while it might be a politically good position to take, that it only makes the problem worse if the livelihoods of auto workers are further diminished so that it's going to come to a point where auto workers are not going to be able to buy the cars that they make. And we don't think that's going to be good for the economy. Uh, we're, we're looking, uh, we're moving in the direction of a union free industry, which is where, where Wall Street wants to take this, to a society of the very rich and the working poor. And I don't think that's the image of America that all of us have in our brains. Okay. Yeah, I'm Joel Siegel with Representative Congress. I look forward to your meeting at 3 o'clock if the Congressman wants to make sure that every American has access to high quality health care from birth to, to transition. But the question I have is, I've been here for nine years and worked on New York The question I have is, we often hear from other members of Congress or staff that they're against national health insurance because they want to keep the insurance that they have and uh, they don't want to keep the insurance in a larger pool. But we know New York's health care is great in Europe and Japan and reduces the cost of health care. Are you ready to follow work? What do you go to shop for about New York's system that they like to have? I think, uh, can I get that? Please. I think that the uh, rank and file at American Axel, for one, the people I talk to that work every day and come to work and are already taking cuts in this industry and uh, through the strike and all the 88 days that we sit out in the cold freezing and took concessions on the contract while the, the fat cat, you know, CEOs get big bonuses, they $8 million that our CEO got and walked, walked away. Um, I think those folks would like to see the national health care system. I think that the national health care system would be good for uh, all the uh, Americans in general. I mean, I haven't seen a country where that didn't work, a national health care system. I haven't seen any, any type of negative effect on the population because of that. I think that's something that we should definitely look into. Okay. Uh, 